Welcome back to Yev's Builds, and today we're putting on sway bars onto the M3. Let's do it. As you can see, we're in a different location now because hey, a lift is so much better. But look, for us to take these sway bars off, it's not a big issue at all, but since I'm running on coilovers, the space in between this and the frame is much less now, so getting to the sway bar end link bolts is gonna be a little bit more difficult, but it's doable. We take off the, the sway bar end links, there's a 17 and a 13 right here, right? You remove those, let this be completely loose, and then you take these two off, and you slide it up from underneath the exhaust, it should be pretty simple, dude. All right, then you take your six mil L key, and mm -hmm. you wanna do these guys. Do we have a socket like this? <laughs> What side is it? It's a little bit confusing, but you get this side out first. There we go. Gotta pull on it a little bit, give it some love, give it that some good, that some power love, you know what I mean? Okay. There you go. It's just a little bit of math, you know? So we gotta reuse these. Sway bar end links, make sure that these fittings are in. Just like that, these little Zerk fittings, they're gonna be facing towards the rear of the car. So, they're gonna be facing the back. That's all fine, we could adjust that a little bit later. Put that in. Take our friend the bolt. Put the nut back on it. And it's 213 mils. Tighten this pretty good. To make it a little bit easier, we're gonna put these end links before we put the actual sway bar in itself. So this notch is supposed to face towards the center of the car, so towards the diff, okay, put it this way. This Zerk fitting is supposed to face the back of the car. Make sure that this is the way it goes in. So we'll put those in, take your 17 and your 13 mil back, you can tighten these guys. Yeah, it's reverse now, pretty simple, dude. All right, we're about to put the sway bar in. You take this grease, this lube looking thing, right? You take one of these, they're the smaller ones. The front ones have much much bigger ones, as you can tell. You take the smaller ones, put some on your finger, be generous, and lube up the inside of this bushing. And so these bushings are split. Yeah, you can see they're split. You can easily apply them just like that. We'll adjust that a little bit later. And then what you wanna do is you wanna take these four nuts that this kit comes with. You take the washers and you put them up against this, right? That's what we're gonna be using to hold these brackets in. Okay, when you have the Zerk fittings on this, on these brackets, right? You wanna make sure that they're facing the diff, just so it'll be a little bit easier. And they kind of snap in pretty easily, just like that. They fit into their position. And they're easily adjusted. Finger tighten all this. There's a locking nut, right? That's a 17 mil. And the bolt that goes onto it is a 13 mil bolt. It's pretty simple. When you put it on, when you push it through, the big washer goes on this side from the bolt side. And then a small little washer goes on the nut side. That's really how it is. When you tighten the bolts, make sure that your end link is centered to where it's seating on that ball joint. Make sure it's centered. Otherwise, it's just not gonna be proper. And then you could tighten that nut that's on the, on the end link itself with the big 17 mil. Tighten it pretty hard. We're doing it on the stiffest setting just so I could really feel the difference. If it's gonna be too tight, I'll loosen it up, whatever. But another big thing, the space between your axle and your actual sway bar itself is supposed to be from zero to one sixth of an inch of a distance, right? As you can see, this one's not touching all the way, but it's supposed to be super close. At full droop, by the way. Meaning, they're both off the ground, like so. And that's it for the rear bars, man. The rear sways. After everything's aligned and everything's proper, you tighten these two, and these two, and you should be good. The rear is done, put all the plastics back on. Moving on to the front, dude. So you take a 17 mil wrench and a 16 mil socket, and you unscrew the sway bars. The same thing to the other side. And your sway bar end links are pretty much removed at that point. This is 
yourself for Dennis. He'll pull it out for you. <laughs> oh. Well, you mask, what do we do now? You take the bigger bushes that we had and, you know, and all this. You take it, and you do the same thing we did previously. You take the lube that it comes with, put these spacers aside for now. Look at that. They give you two, which means you got to use this entire thing on one, dude. Seriously. Be generous with the stuff, dude. You have so much of it, might as well use it all, dude. It's okay if your car is going to be a little greasy on the inside. It's fine. It's not like your BMW is not leaking oil anyway. It's not leaking. Something's wrong. You don't have enough oil. <laughs> <laughs> well then, you take your front sway bar, which by the way, just in comparison, look how much thicker it is than the original front. Dude, that's why we have those spacers. You see that? Take those nuts that we had, take these spacers that we had, and then take, take yourself a dentist because he's going to have to hold this up. By the way, stay tuned. Stay tuned. The V10's coming along. We're getting a lot of work done on it. Stay tuned, dude. But for now, we're just doing sway bars. It's a fun one, you know?